Hi, Destiny. Hello. Well, how, how are you? I have that print too. Is that is that Deborah Roberts? That one. Yes, it is. I have that one too. I I, I love it so much. How has your COVID been? Your quarantine. Um, it's been an interesting experience to say the very least. Um, it's actually been kind of busy. What is your day to day like as a curator? I am a curator. I am an art advisor and I am an artist advocate. Essentially art advising, I basically tell people what art to buy. For artist advocacy, I really just sort of mentor them a bit. I sort of walk them through the process of meeting a new collector and getting from introductions to sales. Um, and I also promote them in a lot of the shows that I do as well. Like I did a show with Christie's called Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And it was basically Christie's effort really to promote, uh, you know, emerging and mid-career artists sort of as a response to the really intense protests that were going on at the time. And, you know, really just making that connection in any way that we can. I'm proud to know that you exist because to see especially black women have what you have at younger and younger ages it means that actually the next generation will have it even younger my own journey i'm like i am a poet and an artist and a community builder i basically spend pretty much every day of my life making things with words you know something I wrote about in one of my books is that when you're looking for what to do in the world, just start by doing what you can with what you've got, where you are and in your own way. And so for me, I felt like, okay, I've got words. And so what are all the things I can do with these words? Could I put them on a billboard? Could I put them on the side of a building? Could I put them in someone's living room? Could I put them in a book? Could I put them on the internet? I think that that's incredibly important. I, I always say, you know, being a Black woman, having to live life, especially in this political climate, is really about how can we connect? How can we support each other? You know, there's sort of been this system in place where we have the well-established uh, galleries that have been around for however many decades and the smaller galleries or you know, the younger individuals who are trying to make their, you know, names heard, but it's not easy, you know, when we have sort of these massive, well-known, well-established galleries. But really, I would say that access to technology really can be such an equalizer. Yeah, you know, I really agree with you. I think that for so long, everything was fueled by such scarcity. So everyone was like, okay, if I'm gonna get through the door, if I worked this hard to get here, then like only I belong on the other side because there's probably only room for me on the other side of it. And I think what's really cool, especially about the next generation is that there's this sense of like, if I'm getting on the other side of the door, I wanna be there with my friends. And, and I want us to be validating each other. And we want to be there to celebrate each other and celebrate, you know, the great depths of where we are able to reach with our work or our ideas. And so, you know, there is, I think, this space in Black culture where we've always been kind of like, no, I want to get there with my friends. But at the same time, I think we just run up against, you know, the museums only collecting one piece of artwork by a Black artist that year or that decade in some cases. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we need more perspectives. We meet, need more diversity, not to fill some quota, but to just have as many perspectives as we can from people who have different experiences in the world. Because it makes us all better people. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. Why is, you know, creativity so important to you? Anything in life that is free in our inequitable society is important. You know, no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you have or don't have, uh, you can access creativity because it is something that lives so deeply within us. It is a part of how we design our dreams for ourselves. It is a part of how we find even like the smallest escapes out of our own traumas or, or hard, you know, things that we've gone through that have been hard in our lives. And so I think that there's such a healing bond to creativity when you have a relationship where you can activate it kind of consistently throughout your life. What about you? Why is creativity important to you? And what does it even mean to you? Like, you know, how would you define creativity? Creativity is really 
like this open door through which you can have access to the entire world if it is properly nurtured and encouraged. And unfortunately, some people see it as something that's just not worth that time when in reality, creativity dictates or outlines what it means for us to be human and for us to realize, you know, we're here on this earth and we're, you know, making our, our mark on history and on the world. Just make the world a little more beautiful. It's, it's my effort to just combat so much negativity and, and frankly evil that's going on and I see people and I say you know this art that they're doing or the statements that they're making really is like that candle in the dark and I want to you know just add on to that as much as I can. I think it's just it's a really interesting time because I think that we're seeing so much truth being revealed um, and I'm encouraged by that, even though the truths are so hard right now, you know, and I think they're so hard for so many people and they're so complicated. And, and just when you kind of think you understand it, you hit a whole new set of things that you're like, wait, what? And then there's, so there's a system behind the system, which has a contingency plan for the system. And mm -hmm. it's, it is so intense, but I am reminded that, you know, Gloria Steinem always says that you can't have healing without the truth. And so, you know, while I feel still connected to hope every day, it's hard to hear the Breonna Taylor verdict and then say that we should be hopeful. There is nothing wrong with being angry at all. There is everything wrong, obviously, with allowing anger to fester into violence in really dramatic and horrible ways, obviously, you know, but the anger, the anger is good. The anger is often love. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what is your hope for the next generation of artists and creators and why is their perspective on, you know, what's happening and their reflections on what's happening so important? And, you know, do you have advice for that? I always say to any artist, really, just whatever you do, keep doing what you love, keep creating, you know, keep reaching out, keep expressing yourself because that is sort of their duty, you know, we, we think of how everything just completely shut down and we turned, we turned to books, we turned to media. We see that people were going, going nuts buying art everywhere because it reminds us that we're human and we're not just surviving, that there is more to life than just surviving or just getting by. There is a beauty in, in all aspects of, of humanity, uh, negative and positive pain and, and, and love and happiness. That is my advice, just keep going. It's almost like you have this obligation, not only to the world, but to yourself to to make that contribution to the world. Yeah, so what what is your advice to creatives, especially writers? We know that everyone who's making art is meant to make the art they make. And whether you're an artist, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, I don't care who it is. I think especially during this time to have some type of record of your feelings, some type of inventory of your emotions is just so critical because it will be the thing you're able to look at and say, gosh, is this really where I am? So I think that you know, to me, if there was one thing I'd say to any artist, to any person, is just to to write right now and to to get it out and, and don't leave your stories, uh, whether you never share them with anyone or you share them with the world, don't leave them trapped in your body, you know, kind of get them out of there. Yeah, this has been such an amazing experience, really, just getting to speak with someone who, to me, just seems so so incredibly wise and so compassionate and so willing and and enthusiastic about reaching out and making those you know links between humans it has been amazing thank you so much oh destiny thank you so much i'm so hopeful having had this conversation with you and i am just so happy that so many people will be able to find your life story and that our young girls are going to have a template in you. And thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations on being a new mother as well. Thank you. I'm going to go see her. I'm literally about to go give her lunch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Destiny. I'm going to DM you. Okay, great. Bye.
Bye. Bye.